Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. I am Maria Coriel Martin, founder of Art Toolkit, and I'm just so thrilled to be here today with John Muir Laws. Hi, Jack. Welcome. <laughs> Maria, this is so much fun. Thank you so much for inviting me on to for this. I've been I've been looking forward to having a chance to kind of geek out with you and reflect on nature journaling and and kind of have some fun with a little phenomenon with you. Oh, well, I am so thrilled. I've been a fan of your work. I mean, ever since I started teaching sketching and, you know, working with people of all ages, um, you know, your uh, guide to nature journaling, nature drawing and journaling is just, you know, one of those incredible resources. And um, and it was such a pleasure. You helped kick off this live demo series. I think it must have been um, um, July 2020 or so when we started doing these. And it's just so fun to be with you again. And, and since then, how many, about how many have you, have you done? Oh my gosh, that is a great question. I'm not sure we've counted. Ballpark. Dozens. You know, we aim for like one a week. We've taken summers off or not one a week, one, once a month. Um, during the pandemic height, we were, we were at one a week and then we slowed down. Um, but it's just such a pleasure to bring together different voices and share inspiration. And I love, I see everyone in the chat is posting where they're calling in from. And it, it's just so fun to see. Um, and yeah, Jack, oh, I don't you're... see that in my chat. Oh, 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 it's on our YouTube. I'll be sure to to share. Oh, it with oh you. okay. I'm... Um, but yeah, you've been just such a leader and inspiration to people around the world for nature journaling. From your books, you're also the president and co-founder of Wild Wonder Foundation, and I've had the pleasure of joining those. Um, and they're just an incredible blast. Uh so thank you for yeah being here today to bring together you know art and science and like you bring together that as long as well as you know adventure and community. Yeah, um, there it it is wonderful to to, to see as, as you've experienced. Just there is this growing, blossoming, highly creative, highly curious community of people who are now talking to each other more and sharing inspiration and ideas and what nature journaling is and what nature journaling can be is just it's just morphing and growing it is it's it's beautiful it's beautiful to see this kind of the thought the you know the the intelligence the wisdom behind all these yeah. little marks that go down on paper um yeah. Yeah. it's just such a wonderful wonderful way to to connect with the world yeah and especially with spring here now happy spring happy <laughs> you spring. know it, there's such a time of change and i know i personally love how the analog tools of my sketchbook, my toolkit, just give me the opportunity to slow down and meditate or, you know, ask questions that, that inquiry based um, exploration and all those ways that that art can really be a tool. Um, and uh, it, it, it's such a, a joy to both do individually and, and share. Can you share a little bit of your background of what got you into using art and exploring the world? Sure. Um, my parents were really influential in that. So my, my parents were both naturalists. My mom was more of a botanist and my dad was more of a bird watcher. And so we go on all of these, these family adventures. And when we'd be out there, we'd be kind of getting this naturalist whiplash. <laughs> like, like bird, 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 flower, naturalist bird, whiplash. All right. <laughs> and the, um, it was, it was just so much fun. Just, I, I discovered early on that this world is the more you kind of let yourself just go geek out in it, there's so much to discover and and experience. Um, my mom would organize these little botany field trips. Um, we had a, a, a dear family friend who was a, an amazing botanist named Gladys. And we'd go out on these trips with Gladys. Mm -hmm. And um, she would do all the logistics, then Gladys would teach us all about plants. And on one of these trips, there was um, a, a woman named uh, Neela Watley, mm -hmm. who was, she was a nature journaler. And she was out there nature journaling. And I, as this little kid, kind of looked over her shoulder and went, oh. <laughs> and my mom, who was a really good observer, noticed, like, this is interesting. Like, Jack is usually like, up, down, over, around, through, like, all over the place. This trip, wherever Neela went, I was her shadow. And I would, yeah. she'd sit down in the grass and I would sit down in the grass next to her. She mm -hmm. would open her journal, start sketching and taking notes on the flower in front of her. And I would sit there and going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the next time we went out 
on a little family adventure. She said, honey, I've got something for you. Come on, come on over here. And we went around to the back of, of the, the Plymouth Valiant. She opened up the, 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 the trunk of the car. And there was exactly the same kind. She, she'd asked Neela, like, what kind of sketchbook are you using? What pencils are you using? It was exactly mm. Neela's kit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I saw that and I knew exactly what to do with it. That's such a gift. And it, it, quality it tools too. You know, you're not just using some little scratch paper, but you've got the 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 um validation that like you can have, you know, real tools to go do your your journaling. That's right. And then having some of the, the logistics taken care of, there's there's enough to, to do mm -hmm. without having your stuff get in the way. <laughs> and so if yeah. that part of the, the process is just just smooth, like, oh. I would like to have that pen in my hand. And then you go, wink. Yeah. Oh, the pen is now in my hand. And <laughs> then, um, and, and, and if there's too many things, if, if you're kind of going like, like, oh, like we does it that one or that one or that one, like just a few simple things. So you can go yeah. like, and now the Tombow pen. Whoop. And then the there's less one, I, I think I like to think of like the cognitive load my Absolutely. brain can only handle yeah. so much at a time. Yeah. And if it's too many choices, then I don't know what to do next. But if it's if it's this or the other thing, oh, it's this. Yeah. And you've got a few things that work really well for you. That's just it's just one more thing that makes it easier to be focused on nature instead of logistics. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I mean, I think about that often of that question of like, do choices make us happier? And within my art practice, I like to minimize choices so I can find some freedom right. with the constraints and save my energy. <laughs> you need to put that really beautifully. Yeah. There's, there's actually really interesting research that was done on this. Like when mm -hmm. you go to, you know, some buffet and there are 30 different types of salad dressings, Th there are several things that happens. One is the person just kind of hits that and they're paralyzed. Yeah. Too many choices. Decision fatigue. And <laughs> so they, and then what we find is first of all, it takes them a long time to get there to choose the salad dressing. Then in addition to that, um, when they choose a salad dressing, they report that they are less pleased with it. Oh no. Than people who have fewer choices. So if there's a person like a between like this, that, or the other thing, all right, those, okay, that's my little choice. So there's limited choice. And then people will go like, ah, I want that one. How do you like it? It's great. But if there's all these choices, it takes them forever to choose. And then how do you like it? And then they're thinking like, you know, maybe I should have had the other. Ah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I get it. Well, um, speaking, speaking of tools, would you be up for sharing I don't know, your little daily carry of some of your favorite sure, tools you're sure. using these days and I, I know I'll, I'll speak for myself that like I love playing with supplies and experimenting so I go through little phases yeah. and I'm going to carry this around and so I'll say that my personal kit is a totally sort of living thing <laughs> uh, yeah I actually just um, um uh before I came on this because I came on this I went through my kit maybe we could have done that together and I was taking <laughs> some things out and I was mm -hmm. putting them aside like I haven't used this in a while. And it's yeah, just it's just yeah. like your first aid kit. You have yeah. to repack your first aid kit on a regular basis because yeah. depending on what habitat you're going into, it's going to be different. And yeah. and also, you know, supplies get used. So some things you don't want. Yeah. Um, you know, now, for, for instance, part of my first aid kit is Narcan. And I didn't have mm. Narcan with me a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's updating to to my knowledge level and it's updating to kind of the needs of our mm -hmm. community. Yeah. And I hope oh, I never have sure. to use that. But, so. uh, <laughs> but you've got it. Um, and I just, I, I remind me, you and I are both taking a trip soon. So I'll be going through my kit soon. And I'm guessing you're doing this too. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 we're both going to be heading to Texas to to go um watch the eclipse i i can't wait and yeah i'm um uh, thinking about the art kit i'm going to be building and i'm going to be doing a little river canoeing trip before and can't wait to see some of this different environment and um really looking forward to it so i know i've got tools on my mind a lot right now as i want to revisit what's in my kit 
And yes. um, I'll just mention to everyone joining us live, if you have questions anytime, I'm also keeping an eye on the chat and we'll do my best to relay them. So uh, feel free to post there. Um, yeah. yeah, so so uh, you, you recently so, reached so your kit. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd love to show you, but before I do, I just want to say like, it's not about like, you don't need more stuff, yes. right? <laughs> Like the stuff that is already in your desk drawer, you're probably fine with what you've got there. So there don't feel that in order to do art, in order to do nature journaling, you need this, that, and the other thing. Um, so you start with whatever you have. Um, you As you look around different people's kits, you will see some things that like, oh, I really do like that. And sometimes, you know, you can, you can take something and try it out and put it in your kit and... Um, but I used to think that like, if I get the same kind of pens that Mark Simmons is using, <laughs> I'm going to draw like that. <laughs> and That's it what doesn't I think about right. every tube of paint. If I have that color, gosh, tubes of paint, they're like candy. Yes. But... <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> it, like it drives <laughs> photographers nuts. Like when they, they, they put up their, 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 their photograph. And, you know, this is the photograph that they took, but like, they had to be at the right place, the right time. They knew that when the sun breaks through that cloud, that's when this moment is going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, people would um, would go up to Galen Rowell and, 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 and say, like, what kind of camera do you use? Yeah. You know, what, what, what film are you using? Like, if I use the same type of film that you use, then I get the picture. If As you also have to, the thousands of hours of practice. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. it's not about stuff, but at the, at the same time, I'm, I'm happy to contradict myself, stuff helps. Yeah, um, yeah. But don't think that you need to sort of run out and get everything. So yeah, this yeah. isn't a, a an activity that is, um, like the, the, the tools you need to enter, you need something to draw on and something to make marks with. Yes and go okay. yeah yeah and then i think you know as you play and tinker or find little things that resonate with you with the practice that's how your voice starts to develop them um, yeah. um, you know what resonates with you what are you curious about what are you interested in and what feels good and that can be different for each and every person and i think there's you know that's something to celebrate <laughs> yeah i i agree i agree mm -hmm. um so i'm going to uh i'm, I'm going to show you what's in my kit and um but but again it's um <clears throat> you're probably at you here i'll take myself out of here all right everybody and if you want to pull up your document view too if that's the oh you've got your bag all right <laughs> yeah so let, let's just start practically if it's a hassle to get your stuff in your hand it's going to stay in the backpack how many yeah. people have brought a bunch of nature journaling or sketching stuff with them on a hike and it stays in the backpack the entire time. I hear from people all the time. And I mean, that's part what drove me to make an all-in-one kit because I was on this trip up in the Arctic and I had like too many little things to keep track of. My palette, my camera, my monocular, my audio recorder, my, you know, my sketchbook and crawling around in the sand. It wasn't practical to, um, to find it all. Yeah, yeah. Your, your little all-in-one kit is brilliant. That's my car kit. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and to, to have a little thing I can reach for and like everything that I need will be here. All right. And it's, it's, it's hold the, hold that up again. Maybe. Oh like, yeah. This is my little one. The little one's my daily carry. That's our pocket. Um, here, let me, uh, I'll, um, yeah. spotlight myself here too. Um, uh, yeah, this, this one's my favorite for just daily use. Cause you know, it's about as big as my hand and it, it's always in my bag. And then I've got sort of the bigger expanded versions for more deliberate outings and looks like you've got a great bag there and everyone is very curious of what is in it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let, let, let's, let's go, 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 let's go into the bag. So what I like to do is I'm, 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 I'm walking around in, in the woods <laughs> and, I, and I say to myself like, Oh, look, there's 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 a, a a bird. I'd like to sketch it. If I have to take off the backpack, put every, sort of move everything around, it's going to be forever to to kind of get things into my hand. But let's just put this journal in here. But if instead I can say, "Oh look, there's a bird," and I can get my stuff out. And I'm now open to a page in my journal and I'll reach in here and let's see how long it's going to take to kind of get 
kind of a little sketching pen in my hand. How about you? I like this one, All right? And now I can do this when I'm done, I can easily put it away and make it easy. I love it. Head yeah. back down the trail. So you want to think of like how much time is there between, ooh, I think I would like to be journaling right now to I'm journaling right now. And then when I'm done, whoop, I put it away yeah. and I can yeah. carry on. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. And, and, and being able to sketch standing up too is another another nice perk where if you've got that pen or water brush and I love, you know, having little clips around my studio to clip pages so that they're not going to get blown by the wind. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, on this, I have, there's, there's, an, there's an outside kit, there's an outside bag that has the stuff that is sort of most sort of high percentage, the things that I'm going to reach for the most. Mm -hmm. And then it's the easier for me pens, to get my fingers. Brush. Mm -hmm. on the things that I that I that I need and they can go back in there. Sometimes yeah. what I will do is if there's one thing that I'm using a ton, I'll flip my little bag around this way. I'll put my journal in this outside pouch and then take my two, take my two favorite things and drop them in there. Then I can zip up these pouches and there's less likely that you know the the sand the dirt and all that other sort of stuff is going to go on there and then i've just sort of streamlined it it's easy for me to where is that there it is it's easy for me to go yep yeah, yep yeah. beautiful beautiful so um i like so journals they come in all different sorts of sizes i like one that is hard bound because um, then it also works as a clipboard when I'm out there. I don't like sort of like something that's too mushy. I kind of like to have a clipboard. So I like one that is hard bound, but I can then also sit on it and, and eat lunch and they hold up. <laughs> Journal and sit pad. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I do really don't like spiral that. bound ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can flip it around, but then the spirals, they get all tweaked and then they kind of start coming out at the ends and they, they, they tend not to really kind of hold up to the beating that I give these things in the field. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But but these things can these can fall down cliffs and kind of and they're still they're still ready to play. Um, something that's nice about uh, so for the size of it, I recommend that people bring something that is as large as you will realistically regularly bring with you. Yeah. Um, if it gets larger than that, then you'll say oh, I'm just going to leave it at home. Mm -hmm. Um, but the smaller you get, then you're saying like, why not just always use small? Because the amount of real estate that you have on the page allows you to get more observations and more thoughts adjacent to each other. And that helps you be able to think when you're out in the field. So a bigger canvas allows you to incorporate more different elements. It changes the way that you're thinking. Like imagine if you're writing War and Peace, you know, you know, four lines at a time and then having to turn the page. <laughs> yeah, you can't get yeah. the, you want to see those ideas adjacent to each other. Mm -hmm. And a larger page does that. Another thing that's nice about a large journal is that when I'm drawing out in the field, I will often take the journal, take my arm, wrap it around the front of my book. And now I have a hard surface. I can sit there and sketch or paint while standing up. And if the ground's wet, that's a useful, that's a useful thing to do. Um, this journal here is a Strathmore toned paper journal. There's, um, and uh, it is, it's one of the journals that I, that I like. The, it's gray paper, but you're then also able to, um, you know, to, to, take, to take white and things that are white then really pop. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love working on toned paper. I actually remember looking at um, the art from Thomas Moran, his field sketches. Yes. Uh, Yosemite and um, and they're just gorgeous. And they're so, I mean, you just feel like you're peeking over his shoulder looking at um, his right. work. And those, Yeah, those um, Moran sketches also really inspired me. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. just, a, there's a little bit of, of, of wash. Yeah. There's a little bit of white gouache that is yep. then being used to make some lights and then intentionally leaving part of the paper 
the tone of the paper. So that's also a value that's being used in the picture. Yeah. So yeah. you have some things you can push it lighter, some things you can push it darker. And then you also, but you don't put tone on everything because yeah. you want to use that color of the paper as, as one of your values. And Moran does that. Masterfully. Really <laughs> uh, we've got a question of what are you like your two favorite things you put in your outside pocket, like pencil uh, or pen? <clears throat> Or so, three favorite uh, things if it's hard to narrow look, down. What are my raindrops on roses? Yeah. Like, so a few of my favorite things. <laughs> if that's so, in my head so, the rest of the day, I'm going to get you. <laughs> um, so um, right now, these are my two, I'm going to grab you and 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 go. So this this will be my kind of, um, my my go-to little pens. This is a ballpoint pen. I'm, I'm enjoying sketching with ballpoint pens right now because... I can press harder and I get a darker, more intense line, just like I do with a pencil, but it doesn't smudge and smear everywhere mm -hmm. like a pencil does. So, um, and because I often work on both sides of the paper, then if I have, um, if I'm doing this, say with, um, if, I'm, if I'm doing that with graphite, then this page is rubbing onto this page. Yeah, yeah. And over time, this is smudging this and this is smudging this and everything gets this sort of gray fuzz around it. Yeah, I don't and, use graphite much in the field personally <laughs> for yeah. that reason, yeah. Um, graphite, is it's wonderful, mm -hmm. really flexible, but this has some of the advantages of that. So I'm do, mm -hmm. using a, a ballpoint pen and then this is a mechanical pencil that has a light colored purple lead in it. Oh, um, I, oh where do you find purple lead? How cool. Yeah, I did. I did a search online, um, for, <laughs> like you know, show me purple lead, and oh, got some. Cool. Yep, uh -huh. you, you can also get um, this one here. What has fun idea! Light blue. Yeah, kind of like the photo. What's it called? Non photo yeah. blue. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. for, for if I were doing white paper, my two tools would be these. It would be mm -hmm. a non photo blue pencil and and a pen, mm -hmm. and then. Um, because I would be blocking in my basic shapes with this and then drawing more deliberately over it with this. So block in, then draw deliberately. Yeah. On the gray paper, this doesn't show up very well. So I'm blocking in and then drawing over that. So for the, the, the gray toned paper, I find that the non-photo blue pencil that I, I love, I love mm. these. It's like when I teach workshops, I often bring a couple of cases of these just to hand out to people because mm -hmm. people are like, oh, I get it. Because yeah, yeah. like the, the idea of like not having to do your whole drawing at once. Some people can do that. They sit down and like, here's the nose and then there's the toes. And for, for me, if I do it that way, I get like a big nose and tiny toes. And the, uh, but this allows me to kind of block in a shape. And then that pencil kind of disappears once you start putting everything else on it. It yeah. does. It does. Yeah. yeah. Um, once you have um, that hard line on there, people's attention goes to that. You don't even have to erase these things. Well, uh, this might be a, a nice segue to you showing what you found in your garden that you thought you might lead us to doing a little bit of sketching oh. with. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, actually, for, first, let me just sort of show you a couple other things. Oh, sure. Yeah. There's so so there's deep more. in the bag. <laughs> like there's there there's th think of like layers. Mm -hmm. And the most stuff that's the most inaccessible is the stuff that I use the least. So I little have another bag of like sometimes I might want one of these other things. But the mm -hmm. stuff that, like, this is the stuff, yes, definitely. And then here is the yes, most of the time. And then the other stuff is maybe I can do without it. Mm -hmm. So I just want to show you a few of my other things in this. If I'm working on the tone paper, some of my, oh, yes. <laughs> so one of All them right. is a Prismacolor white pencil. Because on tone paper, you... It's you. You can just go blop 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 with it, and you've got these little white spots that are popping out on things, and then a your value. So that's yeah. really neat. Yeah. Um, so you get to add the white in on things instead of just leaving the white be white. So yeah, get that sparkle. Mm -hmm. get, you get it's 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 sparkle. It's sunshine. It does all these different things. Yeah. So I've got one little white pencil. If I'm working on white paper, not as critical. Um, I have a couple of Tombow pens 
These are brush pens that allow me to whoop, 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 very, very quickly. Yeah, get, get your some values. Tone. Those also, um, Tombow um, bleed beautifully with a little bit of water. I've always loved the value you can get with like just dabbing them with a water brush too. Those are beautiful. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, so uh, so let's say here is, here is a, here's a, here's a waterfall. Here's some waterfalls. That dark is just Tombow pen around it. And then the white is the, is the pencil. Mm -hmm. Get your values real fast, light, medium, dark. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Um, let me see if there's another place where I'm kind of playing with the Tombow. Um, so here is, you can see a whole bunch of Tombow and white paper yep. and white yep. pencil. Beautiful. Um, they're quick. And, they're minimal tools. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, I love it. Can I just tell you how much fun it is to put in that little piece of white? You just go. <laughs> and, oh, it gives it what? dimension. And oh, it's yeah. It's all legal now. <laughs> um, the other thing in there. Uh, I oh, those are my me. favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the Pentel Aquash large fine, fine point water brush is my friend. And they don't roll away. That's one of the brilliant things about them too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They've got a good reservoir. They come to a nice little sharp tip. So originally I had like, these are brushes that I do my studio stuff with. These are brushes that I use in the field. Now in the studio, I use this too. This is the only brush that I use. Sometimes I use a little flat water brush, but this guy. Right. Super versatile. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's good. Now I'm going to take these. I'm going to stick them back in here because I don't want them to be lost the next time I go out. But let's <laughs> take a look at how we might kind of use some of these tools looking at a phenomenon. That sounds wonderful. Um, and oh, we did have one question about your tone sketchbook. Um, yeah. What the weight of it is, how it handles watercolor paint. Um, let's, let, why don't I put the, the dot cam on it and I'll Perfect. show you. So I'll show you some pages where I put a lot of water on the page. Perfect. You can see that it's not getting too wobbly. Yeah. Right. Um, but let's, Let's go to a doc cam. Um, I, sometimes I think about personally, at least when going out and using a sketchbook, sort of my my goals, whether, you know, it's more of a finished watercolor or, you know, the, the nature journal that's more spontaneous and lively and capturing ideas and a little buckling is just fine in that case, too, with yeah, finding a sketchbook yeah. you like. So, oh, look at all those colors. I love the yeah. tone. Do you ever work on different tone colors, like a brown or is gray your favorite? I think gray is my favorite. I, I am considering going back to brown. I started with brown. Mm -hmm. Um and I, I I could pull over out a brown um a, a brown one. Um but this this the neutral gray um allows you to go to sort of warm or cool. The brown sort of infuses a warmth into everything. Mm -hmm. Um and sometimes that's nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so here's a bunch of watercolor on this page, and you see that you know, it's it 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 took it even has watercolor on that side and watercolor on that side. Um, yeah. it took it pretty well. That page isn't too warbly. Yeah, yeah. So it it does it 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 handles it plays well with others. Yeah. Oh, I love your mushrooms. Oh, aren't yeah, they fun? Oh, and that white, you just helps bring the dimension. I always tell, I always think about making my dark values dark and then those brights pop and you get to push and pull with your uh, toned paper there. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That push and pull is so much fun to do. It is. It can feel almost like sculpting to me when I, when I sketch. Sometimes yes. Building yes. Dimension. That's mm -hmm. a great way to think of it because all of a sudden you are, you are the light. You are the light and you're coming in there like I am sunshine. <laughs> Right. Um, and so what I do is I kind of go around and I find something that is fun. I find something that is interesting, something that makes me curious. And then what I try to do is just let myself go like full geek out mode on it and and see what happens. And today, look at this. Isn't I that, love it. It's isn't so that weird. <laughs> this is a lemon that just went rogue in my garden. Carolyn found this and said, Papa, you're gonna love this. And she was absolutely right. So like, how do you make Papa really happy? Bring him this lemon, right? 
She knows me really well. And I, but I thought that this would be a great thing to do, do some journaling with, um, just to look at how might I explore this using some of these tools. And um, then we will, um, we, we can see what happens. So oh, I'm going to use, um, I've put the purple pencil away. So I'm going to grab this blue one. Um, well, actually, why don't I use the purple one? Because that purple one, there is there's something about purple. It makes a nice, just sort of neutral. So one thing I could do is just sort of start off saying that this is roughly this big. Yep, nothing wrong with tracing. There's no rules. <laughs> All right. And then, so I've got sort of one, one big piece that is coming up in here, this part here. So I've got one zone in here. And the nice thing about this part of the drawing is I don't have to be, I can be really kind of loose and sloppy like you're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, then there's this other little piece that kind of tucks in here, this little piece here. And it's a little bit thicker here. There's a little line through here, kind of down there. It's interesting. There's a piece that kind of hooks on the bottom side of it. And then I'm seeing some other parts popping around here. And if you need to correct a line, you're just going over where it should be, not worrying about, you know, um, erasing right now yeah. or you're, you're not being too fussy. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm kind of like, it's kind of in here. Like there's this part here, there's this part here. This part is, if I get fussy here, if I start doing this, like, e, 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 right. Then if I make a mistake in that, my brain won't let me notice it. But when it's all sloppy like this, my brain is perfectly willing to move lines around and kind of adjust this. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and this view is also really interesting, right? Where um, we have this part that is sticking up here. There's there's a part that is hooking over about halfway down. I have another little piece in here. I have thing wrapping around here. I love as you're naming these, you're just letting them be things. I feel like what you just mentioned about, you know, our brains is so much of drawing can be letting go of our assumptions about things and just mm. trying to notice shapes or lines. And, and <laughs> sometimes we have to let our brain get out of our own way. Yeah. Especially when you're looking at something that you don't understand. Um, it, it, so that'll be, that'll be fun. That'll be kind of a fun the dragon's mouth view like this i think of this 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 doesn't this remind you of like a um a baleen whale coming up like yeah <laughs> big snout <laughs> right um so now i'm just gonna here's like this is no fancy pen this is just this is a ballpoint pen and what's special about this pen is that it was just the closest one to me right now so i don't have to get any specific pen here and what I'm going to do is I was going fast and once if this feels roughly in the right area then I can I just kind of come I'm going to start in one little spot down here and I then I think of myself as kind of interviewing it like what is going on with you you kind of come up and then you go up a little step and then it's sort of bumpily in here and up in here there's sort of a a tight little crack there and then mm -hmm. it opens up a little bit more and then this part here it's going to curve around and there's a little bit of bumpness in it in here it has a little overhang and then i'm going to let this line fade out and come down here 
You can see a little bit of the far side from the, my angle. The angle that I'm looking at this is different than the angle that you're looking at it. Um, just because uh, you're seeing through this camera and I'm seeing through my eyeball. <laughs> All right, so here's this little piece is coming in here and it hooks up towards it. It's like one of those big sandworms in Dune. Oh, I just heard about that. <laughs> You're sort of following along the big contours and accentuating mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. and, and here's this little kind of this little strange little piece in the middle there. Um, and what I'm trying to do is so it's, it's fun to, to do something where you really don't understand what's going on because I don't have any preconception of what a mutated lemon should look like. And then I have another little piece in here, a bump. And we've just got a question about, um, do you detail in the field or later on? Is this the sort of thing you're doing all this outside? You know, you're out in the woods, yeah. just found your-, your the, the more you can do <laughs> out, yeah, the more you can do outside when you're there with the thing, the better off you're gonna be. Because if you try to like do this later on, then what happens is you will start to have this backlog of things that you think you should do. Um. I always appreciate too the energy of getting to notice things in the field and i you know i, I have a little different sense of urgency and yeah. way i move um that is really fun <laughs> it, it, it is fun and you're, you're what you're i think of this as I'm, I'm i'm interviewing this thing and if you don't ask it these questions when you're out there in the field when you get back home you'll say to yourself you know what i really should have asked that lemon um I'm going to show you kind of a, here's a, a, a fun thing you can do. So this is all done with this ballpoint pen. Another uh, uh, pen that I often will have with me, this is a, uh, this is a Tombow pen. And what's cool about it is if I draw lightly, I get a light line. If I press more, I get thicker and thin lines. So it's like having a quill pen. Mm but it is, it's a fiber tip pen. Mm -hmm. And so what I'll do is I'll then kind of come in here and I will give myself a little bit of line variation. Let's zoom down on this just a little bit. Whip, right? And you'll see as I kind of come around here, sometimes you're gonna let that line Be thicker. This one here that I want to pop up here, I'm going to give that a little bit of a thicker line. Yeah, a little more dynamic. And then it comes up. Uh, we've got a question if um, your colored pencil, if you ever have transfer issue issues with those two or not so much. Um, by transfer issues, give me a little bit more. Oh, like smearing or transferring to the, the other page of your sketchbook. Um, it smears a little bit. It smears a little bit. Um, but um, it hasn't. It doesn't smear nearly as much as, say, a graphite pencil would. Um. So we are thinking of like in this, how can I I'm gonna get some line variation. Sometimes I'm being really deliberate with where I make a heavier line, where I make a lighter line. In other cases, just having that line be variable is in itself really useful. 
Can you bump up your sketchbook just a Oh, minute? thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I love this shape because it's so abstract also, but it's also, you know, from a very direct representation and looks like it'll be fun to to build up some of those um contours. Yeah, yeah, this is mm -hmm. it, this is it is it is interesting and what's what I love about it also is it's something that I don't understand. This is there's something going on here that is I think I'll make this line down here a little bit stronger. Sometimes I, on the bottom side of things, I will put in a heavier line. It kind of just feels like a little bit of shadow in there. All right, there's, there's a few little things. Because I, like my comfort zone is usually drawing pictures. Um, because of my dyslexia, I will, I'm often intimidated by, by writing things. So I very often start with drawing a picture. That might not be the case for you. You might be somebody who starts off um, writing about something. Getting marks or words down on the paper is just, is really, really helpful. Yeah. Anytime you feel though that you're like, let's say I don't like this drawing, then what you want to do is turn it into a labeled drawing. The best way to kind of get your brain to, to, to not get focused and obsessed about how a drawing looks is to start writing all over it. <laughs> like oh, this is a hole. Mm -hmm. You know, you, we talked about cognitive load ease earlier and making decisions. And, and something else that I like to think about is the activation energy of that it can take more energy to get started but once you're over that bump things get easier so that idea of like making a mark mm. on a page and um get, get getting that initial initial energy started we have some folks who've just joined and are curious about your lemon that that's actually just like a rogue lemon from your your from a normal lemon tree yeah the only there's one that had a, something slightly like this, but I'm curious if I were to open this up, what I'm going to find inside. Tip down and molded. I like to do what I call show and tell, um, where I'm going to show with my drawing, and then I can also use words to reinforce those same observations. <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine said once that a picture is worth a thousand words, but it helps to write down some of those words. <laughs> yeah. And then I also want to be intentional about asking questions about this. Mm -hmm. um, and so the so my first big question um because i have no idea what's going on here is just what is up <laughs> with you <laughs> you have a lot of people curious by the way to see what it looks like on the inside <laughs> yeah won't that be fun <laughs> won't that be fun um the uh, um, tips have a little bit of green. So if you use your words to reinforce, um, to, to, to reinforce your observations that you've drawn, it just helps you pay a little bit more attention to those. So now let's, let's have some fun. Um, adding some color to this. Um, and I'll just show you um, kind of what my system is for, for color. Um, I'm gonna be using a water brush. So the water is inside the, the handle of this thing. Um, so I don't need a separate little jar of water. To change my, my color, I have an old sock mm. that sits on my <laughs> wrist. So I've got 
um, I've got a sock here, and then I will be using a set of watercolors. Um, Maria's got this really cool mini palette um, that um, if you think like this would be just like too much of a hassle to bring <laughs> Like if you get really into the colors and really into the things, then bringing something like this isn't a nuisance. But at, unless you're really kind of loving all the watercolor and need, well, thinking like, I want a bigger space, then these little mini kits, it just allows you to, to, to you can just throw it in there. It's, it's not going to weigh down your pack more. The larger you get with it, the more of a, like, it's hard to fit it in with other things. But, but there's, um, so some people like larger, some people like smaller. My preference is to kind of have something that is a little bit larger. So on the inside, I've got a bunch of colors. Each one has sort of a zone where you see I mix those on the palette. So I recommend that you organize your own kit to have little zones. I also have some gouache paint here. Gouache yeah, like whole... watercolor, but it's just a little bit more opaque. I also will often have a little gouache palette. So these are all um, little tabs of gouache paint that I only have light values. Gouache is a little bit harder for me to use than watercolor. Um, it re-wets and does these sort of surprising things. Um, but for, so for darker stuff, I just use regular watercolor. Yeah, I but often carry something... regular watercolor and then white gouache as a little shortcut too. That's something I That's find. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you can take, yeah, you can I... take that white gouache and then tint it with these other things. Um, yeah. Another way of doing that, so this, this is my gouache mixing area. I can take white gouache from here and then mix things in there and sort of tint them up. Now, uh, I'm going to ask you a quick color question because they've been patient and curious mentioning that you had like three primaries that you've demonstrated with before. And if you might oh, yeah. know what three primaries those are, just the color names. Um, um, Hansa Yellow Light, Thalo Blue, Green Shade. That's all one name of something, Thalo Blue, Green Shade. Um, and I use Quinacridone Pink from Daniel Smith. So those are all Daniel Smith colors. Um, those are my, my, my three um, favorite primaries. We could go down that whole rabbit hole of red and blue are not primary colors another time. Um, but um, those are are those are colors that you just oh, make such a difference having those in your palette. So what I do is I'm going to take my little brush pan here and um, and jump back onto that dot camera and just show you how much fun this is going to be and why I have the gouache. So if what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this. So I take some of that, mix it up on there. I'm going to give it a little bit of a jiggle on my palette. And then I can I can brush fairly quickly. But when I get over to the edge, you'll see that my, my approach slows down a little bit. Because what I will do is I will take the edge, I will take the tip of the brush, and just bring it more slowly right along the edge. So down in here, I can be blip, 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 blip. And then tip to the edge. A little control where it matters. Yep, exactly. Now, because this is transparent watercolor, you can see a little bit of that gray of the paper showing through, can't you? Um, so if I were doing this on white paper, it would be brighter. And you're first thinking like, oh, that's good enough. But I want you to compare it with this. Right. Is that handsome so, yellow light, that nice and cool yellow you're using? Yeah, yeah, this is, and, and part of that coolness is that color of the gray coming, yeah. uh, the gray paper coming through. Yeah. So That's that cool. is, <clears throat> that is where, um, I'm going to bring just a few little, a little orange into some of these shadowy areas here. 
I love with watercolor just how quickly you can lay color in. It's such a fast and Yes, medium. yes, I absolutely So great agree. for travel. Yeah. It's fast. It's fun. And what the water brush does that's really nice is um, sometimes a, a, a brand new water brush, there's a little bit too much water that kind of comes through. So it, you, things get a little bit too sloppy at the start. But once you've been using a water brush for a little while, um, there's a there's a controlled amount of water that comes through it. And so you don't get these giant puddles going everywhere. Yeah, there's Uh, definitely a learning curve. I'm going to clean this just by wiping it on my wrist cuff. And now I want to show you, like you said, let, let's say, but, you know, but I, I want this to be more vibrant. That's where our friend the gouache comes in. Because the gouache is a little bit more opaque. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just wiggle this up into, oh, look at this. Well, you get that opacity. Oh, yeah. Now we're getting orange. yellow and gouache is also very forgiving um sometimes to a fault where if i don't like it i can re-wet it and i can lift it up and take it off so it's not really staining my paper too much um So that's fun. Now I, I let that dry and I'm going to actually uh, accelerate the drying process here a little bit. Out in the fields, what you would do is um, it just the sun takes care of that. But here in my studio, I have to make that go a little bit faster. And for this next step, I really, really, really want it to be dry. And you can see at this point that those purple lines that we originally put in are not distracting. Yeah, they just add to a little bit of texture for the lemon. There we mm -hmm. go. Ah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here. And um, the there's a little bit of texture that I'm seeing on the surface of this. You see those little pits Mm hmm. and a little bit of glossiness. This doesn't look pitted and it doesn't look glossy. So there I'm going to reach into my kit. And here is that Prismacolor pencil that I talked about. This one's kind of had a hard life, poor little thing. And what I'm doing is I am, in some of these sort of highlight areas, I'm gonna make a little squiggle like this. And what I'm trying to do is leave little places, essentially making pits. So this light is hitting in this area. I'm making little pits in there. You're getting texture and value all in one there. Mm -hmm. And as I get further away from that, I'm starting to lift my pencil off the paper more and just make little marks in that. Yeah, look at that. It starts to pop forward. So much fun building up the layers, going from the rough sketch and your ink, watercolor, little gouache and little pencil. Yeah, I do put the pencil on at the end. It's this little kind of icing on the cake. Don't put on the icing on first. So 
uh, Jack, as you finish with some of these final details, um, can you tell us a little bit about what else you've got coming up? I I confess I did just get your newsletter. I hope everyone can can sign up for that, mentioning some really cool things. And I know you've got your travel. Uh, what can you share with folks? Um, actually, bust out that newsletter because I I I will I, I'm sure I will forget one of the things that's really important to mention on there. Um, we've we've got uh, some. Um, with the Wild Wonder Foundation, we have some exciting um, opportunities coming up. We have a, a, a teacher education program um, where we're going to give people a bunch of tested tricks for teaching nature journaling to other people. Um, and uh, we've got a bunch of educators who are going to be sharing their best strategies with other people. Um, let's see. We have... Oh, 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 for Earth Day, we're encouraging everybody to get out and to um, to to do some nature journaling in a place that you love, but also bring um, along some trash bags to help you be able to make the place where you're exploring just a little bit better. Something that, that my mm -hmm. scoutmaster always kind of got us to do. And whenever you kind of go and you camp in a place, you always leave it better than you came. Yep. So this is bringing some of those that stewardship thought into your practice of of how you are nature journaling um um what else is 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 on there that i'm forgetting let's see here so you've got your educator workshop um it'd be really fun and, uh, and again and, and a lot of people think good. that like mm -hmm. oh to be a nature journal educator i need to be like really really good with natural history and like know all these little nature secrets and things no, you just have to be curious and they say or oh, i have to be like this artist artist person no you actually don't you just have to make it safe and give permission for other people to do it and then when people get in front of some phenomenon this thing takes over and and you just go like and my work is done right you know little lemon <laughs> take it from here and then little lemon will go like oh look i'm cool and then they start cutting this <laughs> right um oh. yeah so the that if you're thinking like you know like oh i i don't know if i've got the chop but i would like to be able to teach share nature journaling with other people but i don't think i'm there if you have the desire you've basically got the tools to to do it it's not so nature journaling is not about making pretty pictures it is not about being an expert in all the natural history stuff it is how to give permission to people um, and a little bit of structure to help them be able to use these systems to open up the world to them and to be able to do it. Oh, which which reminds me. Kind yeah, of, just, just like, reminded me too. Yeah. And actually, I'll tell you what, maybe maybe before, um, would you be willing to cut your lemon and show uh, us? The, just, just oh, they don't want to see that. Oh, I mean, I, I have seen a few comments that people would like like to see. And then, and then we have a little more show and tell. What do you but, think, um, folks? What do you think? All right, we have to do this. So what I'm doing is I think of the, uh, like doing cross sections. Like what will it look like if I cut through this little lobe? And by the way, the fate of this is lemonade later today. Uh, <laughs> no, like, yeah. it will not be, yeah, it'll be used humanely. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's right. Um, but you know, what sometimes happens and actually what is kind of starting to happen right now is I'm actually bonding with this lemon. Oh, and no. I don't know if I want to cut it now. No pressure. I, you can send this. It is, it is so interesting when you pay attention to something, you 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 build a relationship through the act of attention, and 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 sometimes I then like with this little guy, <laughs> like, like it's now got a per this thing has so much personality, right? <laughs> ah, um, okay, we're we're, we're gonna. We're gonna do this. Wait, gonna first, I'm, I'm gonna thank it. I want to really thank you for playing with me and and uh, making my world a little bit brighter. You are an awesome lemon, and um, you will nourish my family, and you'll give us vitamin C, and you have helped tickle my brain. I'm really, really grateful to you. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate right. the lemon too. <laughs> um, so now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some cross sections, some through this little tip, and then further back here, and then further back here. And what I like to do when I'm doing a cross section is I like to show on the drawing where those sections are cut through. So let's say I have, I'm gonna be cutting here. Um, I am going to You might need to um, 
do some more painting. Finish if you feel like is sharing a final page after our demo. If you end up painting it, oh, yeah. cross sections. There's cross section A. Mm -hmm. and then I want to cut it through here, close to that. So we're going up over some of these bumps. This is going to be, and you don't even have to draw all the way across. You can just have a little line there and a line here. This is line B and this is B prime. And then let's see what it's like back here. C and C prime. You learn a different thing if you cut it this way. So the angle that you cut it is going to, um, it's going to affect what you see. And here we go. Let's first just cut this across here. And I always like to kind of try to get a, 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 an idea in my head of what I think it's going to look like. I think I'm going to see some of that pulp kind of coming up into there. And oh, but look, oh, look how, at that. Look at that. Not very much pulp. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Lots of peel there at the, at the tip. Interesting. Yes. And a, and a few little kind of cool lobes down in there. And then I'm seeing this cool little lemony edge. Yeah. Around here. Um, let, let, check this out. Here's here's a kind of a quick trick um, for this. I'm just going to take this and put it down on my page. And I'm going to trace around it. And then when I, I, I lift it back up, then of course it's the inverse. This side is this side. But you trace these things and, um, or if I do this, then that is that same view. Let's do that. You've got it, basically both pieces to scale from your initial tracing of the uh, lemon and now to your slice. Mm -hmm. Now this, all this pale stuff in here, I am tempted just to try to do this with the paint rather than inking it. So I'm first going to just put down a layer of uh, white. I kind of, the more that I do this, the thicker it gets with gouache that you're re-wetting, it will tend to be pretty, uh, not, not as opaque as you want it to be. When I first put this on, it's going to go on nice and opaque. As it dries, you're going to see that it gets a little bit more transparent. And then in the center, it's going to be, I might use the color of the paper here. Anytime mm. you can figure out a way of using the color of your paper, do it. Um, I love the varied lines you can get with your water brush there. Oh, aren't the, the water, these water brushes are just, you can draw with a water brush. A few little highlights in there. And then around the edge, Your pop of yellow. A little bit of yellow. And then 
these little um these little i wonder what the name for them are these little cells around the edge um Yeah. Mm -hmm. that when you squeeze it those shoot out juice if you ever have a chance to take a lemon and squeeze it right next to a candle um there's an oil in these that is flammable and you get these Uh, the sort of a a, a, a a display of sparks Wow. and the oil of these things hits the candle and so if you squeeze one of these things right next to a candle you get this of little sparks it's really really fun to do so i'm going to get a little bit of yellow but i'm going to mix it with a little bit of gray for these little i wonder what i want to find the name of those little cells no it should be a little bit grayer no oh there you go Little details, and now already that gives it a little bit more dimension, too. Might do more of that all the way. So there's, it's easiest to see those around here. Less so up on that side. That's interesting. I wonder why. It becomes less apparent up here and more yellowy. So I'm going to get a little bit more yellow on my. Beautiful. Get the general idea. This is much whiter. than the real thing. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cream color into this. Maybe a little bit more. And then while that is drying, I'm going to make another cross section I'm I'm wondering like if this was this caused by some critter in there will there be any evidence of somebody living inside here like look at this there's a little seems to be a little little kind of hidey hole down in here there's some sort of a is that an emergence hole was something living inside here so now I'm going to come back from that and I'm going to make a cut across here I'm going to guess. I think somebody lives in here. Oh, look at that. I'm wrong. Isn't it? It's really fun to be wrong. It is really, really fun to be wrong. <laughs> oh, That oh, I is love it. so interesting. And look at how, you know, normally you cut a lemon open and there's a, there's a nice little symmetry of those wedges around the side. This, uh-uh. Oh, that's fascinating. That is fascinating. What a cool object to find in your garden. And <laughs> Yeah. yeah, So yeah. what, what I'm going to do with this is I can just, if I put this down on my, my journal right now, there's going to be so much lemon juice on it that it is going to kind of mess with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, lemon juice on my pants here. kind of blot some of that up so that when I trace on this, it is not going to leave as, as, as much liquid behind. Well, Jack, I want to acknowledge, I don't want to keep you online all day. <laughs> um, if you want, do you feel up for doing your last cross section here with everybody? Or do you want to uh, wrap up and um, you can share, share a little later a final photo? Um, I think probably, um, Yeah, we we it might be most helpful for folks to uh 
uh, let people kind of get about their day. Look at that little, Oh. uh, right? So Yeah, if I did yeah. that there, that means when I look at this, wait, but this little one here, that is the thing that is kind of coming in like that. Now I can pick this up, turn that over there. And I will then ink this in, draw this in. Finally, I'll get one more section down here. I mean, what a what a strange what a strange thing that is. Yeah, Um, yeah. you know, and this is this is just when we start looking around our world with an authentic curiosity. We're going to discover really fast that we have no idea what's going on in the world. The amount of stuff that scientists have figured out of what of kind of the mechanics of how things work is the tiniest little fraction of what is possible to be known. And Yeah. some of the things which we figured out were wrong about. Yeah. Um, and so what we want to do is just start experimenting with, with stuff, trying to figure out how stuff works. be willing to change our minds in the presence of evidence. As we start to kind of build models in our head of like, yeah, I think I know what's going on. Challenge those with reality Yeah. and, and see if you can find places where nature, where reality is doing something that is different than you expected. And then find that and then delight in that. There's so much delight in that, that discovery. And I mean, that's for me, so much of it is joy. And that's come across with you and your backyard discovery and sharing with all of us and hope that, you know, this whole creative community can, can share in that joy as well. Um, which brings me to this really cool thing you have on your website and that you also generously sent a whole bunch to Art Toolkit. Uh, and these are so cute. Aren't these <laughs> cute? yeah, Right. they're So so the, the, awesome. the idea of this is just, we want to kind of help people think of like, I don't know how to get started. So I now carry a bunch of these in my nature journaling kit because when people come up to me and say, what are you doing? I would explain what I'm doing. And if they seem interested, I then can go here and pass this over to them. Oh, another thing that, that I also carry in my kit is I always carry a backup water brush because Sometimes you lose them and sometimes you meet somebody out there and going like, oh my gosh, Oh, what yeah. is that thing? And Oh, yeah. you will rock somebody's world if you then just say, do you like that? Yeah, this is really useful. You show them how it works and they're just like, going, I've been doing this all my life. I need a how, I what. And then you just go here Oh, that and is you such can a, give them such a kind gesture. their, Oh, yeah. their own little water brush. You'll Yeah. blow somebody's mind because like people just... We're not doing in intentional generosity. So I like, I, I will pack stuff with me to help me be generous. Yeah. And then knowing that I've got extras so I can be generous. Like th this, this, this whole idea started with me a long time ago when my daughters were watching nature journaler and uh, comic artist, Mark Simmons do some journaling. And he had this cool pen. It was kind of, it was, it was like one of these. And um, they they were they were just like going oh wow oh that's so cool and then they they did the thing like what is that pen and he went like you know I really like this I can press hard and it makes a thick line they're like ooh and then he just went here and he passed the pen over to them and I'm just like <laughs> okay I gotta have that in my 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 repertoire of how to live your life. Like I love you it. can Yeah. give other people, you can be like the cool art supply fairy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that's how I got introduced to one of my favorite pens too. Same thing. Student said here, this is this cool pen. Try it. And Yeah. you keep it. Um, I want to just make sure you actually tell people what these are, these cute Okay, little so guys. this is called a zine. Yeah, this is called a zine. And it's like, what is journal nature journaling? Nature journaling is, um, and I wanted to send a shout out um, to Kate Rudder, um, uh, who did the the design on this also worked on by by uh uh by 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 beth Gologoli and check this out so on the inside it has there's two sort of basic kind of mantras that we have of what what you can do with nature journaling one is i notice i wonder it reminds me of that's your observations the questions that you ask and the connections that you make and then how do we put that down on the piece of paper that's with words pictures and numbers so this is the 
like the two triads, like it's the, here's, I notice I wonder it reminds me of, here's words, pictures, numbers. And what you yeah. do is you put those together and you put that down on your page and then oh, cool things that are happening. Um, then the next page is about tools and, and sort of some strategies to get you doing. So it's like this little booklet and then there's a QR code on the back that you can use, and I'll hold this up to the screen, so you can take a screenshot. And we'll, we'll post a link, you've got this available right. as a free download and- But, but wait, there's more, because it's a zine, <laughs> what you do is you then unfold it and you turn it inside out. And the way that zines work is if you make the middle into a diamond like this, and you put those together. So you make it make a diamond. You then kiss the sides and it makes a totally different zine. And this one has a bunch of activities that you can do in your own nature journal, right? So um, these are our old cool nature journaling activities. And you say, I would like to, bring it back to the way that I started. You can then do that. And then you're back home. That's a zine. And it's also, it's like this transformer. It's really fun. So we've got these available on the Wild Wonder website, wildwonder.org. That's where you can go to find all these wonderful community events. I also want to encourage people to connect with this community. Um, you can, um, so we have, uh, I, would, I would say to start by just checking out wildwonder.org. And you're going to see there are all sorts of, of classes that people are, are offering, um, uh, inspirational ideas, resources for teachers. Um, if you want to see people, you know, teaching different nature journal activities in the field, you can see videos of that and like how these works. And then they explain like, this is what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. You could do this with kids. Um, if you're looking for your your own inspiration as a nature journal, you can also connect with this larger community of people online through Facebook. And soon we're going to be starting our own nature, um, wild wonder kind of community platform. Oh, fantastic. Um, like in, in Facebook, when you put something up on Facebook, Facebook gets legal rights to some of your stuff. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, we're going to create a safe, secure platform, a clean, well-lighted place for having nature journaling conversations. So we can have all sorts of richer conversations um, about, um, about nature journaling together. Um, so we're going to, uh, but currently there is a Facebook. Um, and uh, you can also find my classes and resources if you go to johnmirlaws.com. Um, I offer uh, classes and, and, and things there. Um, a bunch of online um, teaching at no cost. And there's, um, but it also we have some worldwide events. I'm going to be, um, if you're, if you haven't figured out your summer schedule yet, the end of this summer, I'm going to Tanzania with a group of nature journalers and you can join us on that um, adventure. Um, and so, uh, there's lots of opportunities, lots of ways to get connected with this community. It's just um, it's this wonderful intersection between curiosity and artwork and um, caring for each other. The community is just has so much kindness and generosity in it, um, caring for the planet, um, stewardship. Um, yeah. All those are coming together and we'd love it if you come and play with us. Well, um, I... Uh, we'll make sure all those links are all in uh, the description of this YouTube. We'll make sure it's updated. Um, Jack, I want to thank you so much for your generosity and, and enthusiasm. It's truly infectious. And I know you've inspired people worldwide. And I'm just so thrilled um, to, to get a chance to paint along with you today. And um, you all did share a bunch of these really beautiful nature journaling quick start guides with Art Toolkit. So um, as part of the celebration for spring and going into April, um, we will be shipping, um, including with every order, one of these zines while supplies last. Also for anyone who comes in in person, we've got these. So we're really thrilled to get to help share them and appreciate your generosity there. And 
Um, and Jack, I look forward to following your adventures. I hope you have a great um, eclipse trip and um, everything else, all your and, projects. And, and, <laughs> and, and you too. I also, if, if folks who have followed me before, um, if this is your first exposure to Art Toolkit, I'm going to encourage you to go to um, Art Toolkit online after this and see some of the nature journaling resources and opportunities and other ways of connecting with um, uh, nature journaling um, tools, resources, and inspiration that you have put together. Thank you so oh. much. Well, for, thank you. We're for, for really doing passionate about inspiring and empowering artists to go and explore the world through art and have dozens of uh, free demos on our website. We also have uh, quarterly workshops. We'll be announcing our next round of workshops this Thursday. So if you aren't already signed up for our newsletter, um, that's available at the bottom of our website. And I'm just personally grateful um, uh, just for this incredible creative community. So again, Jack, yeah. thank you. Thank you all uh, who joined us today for being here and um, for uh, sharing again in, in the joy and enthusiasm of, of creativity and, and nature journaling. Thank you all. All right. Bye, everybody.